Well, hello and welcome back to Common Farm Flowers here in sunny Somerset between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Rincanton, zone eight, frost hardiness. And today I'm having a bit of a tidy up because once I've made some space, I'm going to go up the field and harvest material for drying for the winter. I've got all sorts of bits and pieces that have been calling me while I've been carrying out my ordinary job this week. And we've had nice, a nice dry day. Normally I try and do my jobs in the morning, but the day for once, we've had pretty much a dry day all day today, which means that I can go and harvest my material for drying at its driest. We've had very, very wet weather here in southwest England through July. After a hot June, we've had a wet July. So if you're going to cut things for drying, it's a good idea to cut them at the time of day when they are at their driest. So it's almost four in the afternoon. So they've had all day with a brisk wind, drying them out. Let's go up the field and see what we can find. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. The links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. Of course, I've swept the table, but I'm going to leave the compost here because I've got some seed sowing to get on with after I've done all the uh, material, dried all materials. So I'm not going to hoik this off the table. I'll, I'll leave it here for the moment. But I have the rest of this space to fill, sort, grade and get everything hanging up so that I've got it for later in the season. Come on, let's go and have a look. I must say it's nice to have an empty trolley for once. Normally my trolley is full of buckets and it weighs rather a lot. Today, it's just me and an empty trolley. Now it's really worth using your initiative a bit when you're cutting for drying. This is Chinese forget-me-not. And you can see how these wonderful seed heads are kind of dramatic, but they're very solid. They're pretty dry. So already, so if I hang them up, they will be useful drama to add to autumn and Christmas wreaths. Should I make a summer wreath at the end of this process? I think I will. Um, I'm going to leave some of these where they are to set seed and drop their seed so that it can come back next year. But I'm going to harvest a good lot of it because I think in, in the autumn it's going to be really, really useful. And it may not look terribly green now, but believe you me, come Christmas, this will look quite colourful. Look, it looks alive. <laughs> I love them. I love it. Here, I've got masses and masses of nigella seed heads. I tend to use nigella more as seed heads than I do as fresh flowers in my floristry. If you cut them when they're like this, still got a bit of green, they dry with a bit of green. So this is the exact moment to, to cut them and get them into the house, hang them up and imagine those in your autumn and winter wreaths. Lovely. I know, I know. They're good, aren't they? Now, if you're going to cut helichrysum for drying, you want to cut them before 
you can see too much of the middle of the flower. So this is a really good time to cut. If I wait and cut when it's a little bit more open, for example here, I risk when they're drying, sorry, you can't see me. <laughs> um, I risk when they're drying, they, uh, they blow, they go to seed and all the seed explodes all over your studio, uh, which is fine because you can then keep it. But if you particularly want them for drying, I'd say this is about the, p the point. This is just right. Um, you can cut them earlier like this uh, and they'll all be fine but you can feel them they're dry already they're dry on the stem uh, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a rave up with these and then I'm gonna give them a water and a feed and then they'll keep flowering now if you have wild carrot it will be crawling with soldier beetles at the moment all the flowers but as they begin to go over you'll find they make the most beautiful seed heads and these are very much worth hanging up to dry keep some for seed i'm going to give some to my friend saskia who makes flower essences she's specially asked for some green uh wild carrot seed heads um <laughs> so much wildlife here uh I haven't got masses to cut yet, but I'll cut a few. If I'm going to make a wreath, I'll cut enough to make the wreath as we go along. Keep it in my... Hello, Flutterby. Flutterflies are fantastic. Now, the hydrangea heads are going to be good for drying when they're a bit riper. These are still ripening. What you want is a, a sort of hint of vintage about your hydrangea heads before you start drying them because they'll dry really well then but don't leave them too long if you let them get frosted they'll go brown which you might not mind uh, but if you want them to keep their color then you want to wait until they're very ripe these will go a little bit pink and um, so I will leave these and I'll be cutting them for drying probably mid late September before the first frost before they get too battered by the weather but for the moment they're not there yet they're not good they're not ripe yet there's lots to dry in this patch i'll cut a few bits to show you butterflies everywhere this verbena has starter you can see how the flower heads are right up at the end and there's quite a lot of seed beginning if you hang these upside down they'll dry really really nicely so that's one thing wait until they're quite ripe see how this one the flowers right at the top and then the rest is seed head that'll dry really nicely so that's your number one thing number two i love this Fading, fading sanguisorba. There's a lot of butterfly action here. They're all fighting with each other. Are they too high for you to see? I don't know. Anyway, um, sanguisorba dries really, really nicely. Keeps this sort of faded pink uh, for a vintagey look. Very good. So we'll have some of that. Um, fantastic Achillea cloth of gold and it's had an infestation of somebody which does make it a little bit dirty looking however I'm going to cut it anyway because it may look a bit grubby now 
but long experience teaches me that this colour in the winter will be very welcome. So I'll cut, I'll cut that for drying. Now these echinacea aren't quite ready for cutting yet to dry. What I'll do, they're covered in bees, is I'll wait for them. I'll cut some for, for cut flowers. Um, but once they're quite ripe, here, I'll show you with this one. Can you see? I'll pull you down a bit. Um, so this one, the petals are a bit tired looking. And uh, what I'll do is strip the stem. Always strip the stem. And rather than try and dry the petals and keep them looking tidy, because they, they, they bruise so easily, is I'll just take the petals off. and dry them like that. And you get this lovely sort of rich orange thistle. Great colour and uh, really useful for autumn and winter work. There you go. <laughs> but then generally they're not really there yet, so I'll wait for them. Now, Achillea dries really, really nicely, but it is also one of those things you want to wait for it to be ripe enough. So I'll show you two different stems and you'll see what I mean. This, the flowers are very small. That's good for using fresh. This the flowers are much bigger. Can you see the difference? They're, they're sort of more buttony. They're much riper. And so this is good for drying, whereas this isn't quite ripe enough to dry yet. And there that's the three stages of it so this is pale pink and very fresh and then it ripens and and gets paler but then it ripens still further and that is really good and you may think again you might think but that's not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen but it's the end of July so there's a lot of very, very beautiful material in the garden. So you're not really looking for this, but I can tell you again, in the winter, this will be welcome color. And imagine if you've dried this in a Christmas wreath, that's a little, like a little bit of snow. Take my word for it. Now, this Artemisia it's going to dry absolutely beautifully. It um, has a lovely herby scent. You're going to have to be careful not to get it too tangled in your drying. But it's delicious and silvery. And look at the yellow. There's a bit of yellow in the flower. Very, very useful. and good for Christmas. I love it. I love it. I think it's, look at that. Look at the movement in it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm right under here. I love it. Look at that. And again, just humming with life, this um, sea holly, it's a very nice little variety. It's called blue thumb or something. I'll look it up. Um, it's easy to find if you look it up. 
I love it because it's small, everything is small about it. So for buttonholes and flower crowns and little floristry, it's really, really useful. Whereas the big, for me, the big sea hollies are too heavy and they're very scratchy to be near anybody doing anything with them. But this is fantastic and it dries beautifully. So I'm going to cut some of this, but leave some for the, for the wildlife, which is just loving it. Look at that. And then last but last least up here, we've got this gorgeous limonium. Very easy to grow from seed. I've been bitten by an ant. Um, very easy to grow from seed and it dries beautifully and makes such a good extra frothy, icy, I don't know, it's just marvellous in Christmas reeds. I use it a lot. Um, and then right here, just beginning to flower, and I'll take some just so I can show you in the wreath that I'm going to make, is a perennial straw flower. No idea what it's called. <laughs> I, this is another, I'm sure I got this at a, a village plant sale one year. And it's just sat here very happily. I don't use it that much, but um, you can see actually dried for Christmas wreaths. Again, a little bit of fresh, it's fresh. So cut it to dry it when it's early enough that I don't want it to get weather damaged. Um, I love the little bit of gold and white. It's really, it's really good. Um, so I'm going to cut some of this and I'll use it in my wreath I'm going to make for you. Now, when you're back in your studio or wherever you're going to be sorting out your materials that you, you want to dry, especially if it's been wet weather, if I make a bunch like this, you can see how there's quite a lot of damp leaf action. And what you risk if you tie big bunches with all this stuff is rot getting into the middle of the mix and ruining it all. So it's really worth spending a little bit of time, each stem, just take off the spare, anything that might get caught in the middle of the, of the, of the bunch and rot, because you don't want to find, you know, if, especially uh, if you're likely to sell any of it, you don't want your customer ringing up and saying, it's all rotten on the inside. <laughs> And they would be quite within their rights to be quite cross about that. So um, just spend a little bit of time making sure that the stems are clean before you tie them all up. And then when you do tie them up, tie them in the, in the short term in small bunches so that if you do find you've got any rot anywhere, it only hopefully affects one bunch at a time. Um, we've had really, really wet weather here, for which I am quite grateful. We've had a very wet July and as a result, everything is wetter than it would normally be, certainly than it's been for the last few years when I've been harvesting for drying. And I'm very conscious, I don't want a build up of damp. So I'm hanging in small bunches. So I'm doing bunches of 10 because then I know that they're bunches of 10. And so I've already done my stem count. And I'm going to just go through everything and make sure all the leaves are taken away. And when you tie your bunches up, Tie them really tightly because they will shrink. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to dry. 
Uh, and another reason to actually do relatively small bunches is because if you've got a big bunch and they shrink, then you end up with them all on the floor smashed into smithereens. They're not worth anything. So that's a good size. That's 10 stems of nigella ready for hanging up. And on we go. So as I make them into bunches, I hang them from the rafters of my studio uh, and they fill up the space. It's, very, it's slightly annoying and I end up hitting my head on them. But once they're good and dry, like these ones, I'm just putting them all together. I know I've got them for use in the winter and, and I, they don't mind piling up, but they need to be really, really dry. You've got to be confident they're dry because otherwise you risk you still risk rot coming in the middle. And so wait until they're really dry. I've been harvesting lots of things over the summer. So here are some, some lovely allium that I harvested uh, when they finished flowering. Poppy seed heads, lovely, very beloved um, honesty, which will need to have its, I'll have to, I'll have to, take these covers off them uh, to turn them into silver dollar shapes but at least I harvested them in time. So I'm going to make a very very simple base for a little drying wreath. So the, the material I'm going to put into this wreath are going to dry into the wreath um, and I'm using some rather over energetic honeysuckle which I have growing outside the back door and um, it's trying to, it's like a triffid. So it's an ideal time to be able to cut this bit back and give me some nice twigs to make a base with. But you could use any kind of vine, clematis, clematis, is it clematis or clematis? I never know. Um, a vine vine, if you have a grape would do. Anything that will bend and make a base. But take the leaves off because otherwise they will, they will wilt out of the water. This is not material that will dry. it into a really simple little circle. I'm not going to do a huge, anything huge. I do a, what a lovely step-by-step -step workshop, by the way, for an autumn wreath. We're not that, we're not there yet, I promise. Um, but uh, I do a step-by-step, -step, if you're interested, uh, book a place and we'll really go into the gory details. But this is just an idea of um, what you can do with some of the material that you're harvesting to dry. Right, I'll make this and then I'll show you. <laughs> Otherwise we'll be here all day. So I've made a little, a little circle, move you back a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, a really, really simple little circle out of honeysuckle. When I do my autumn wreath and my Christmas wreath workshops, I show you how to make uh, with willow and twigs, which is slightly more sophisticated way of doing it. But this is a fair enough, firm, nice little, it's not perfectly circular, but it'll do. And it too will dry out slowly uh, with the material that I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to show you what I do in a minute. So you just want to take one of each of your little pieces of material and make a series of posies. So, this is the limonium, which is so good. Um, so I'm going to make a series of posies by adding 
one each of all the bits and pieces that I've cut. It's worth making, as you make them, make sure you can see all the different bits as you go. <laughs> it's all heaped up, it's not very tidy, but pull all the bits off the stem so that the stems are nice and clean. nice posy. I'll come and show you. This little posy and you need to make enough of them that you can then tie them onto your wreath and fill the wreath up. So I'm probably going to need 10 or 15 posies. So I'll make my 10 or 15 posies and then I'll show you what I do next. Right, I'm about halfway, a little over halfway round, and I've attached six posies, all going the same direction. No two quite the same. I could stop here. It's all going to dry slowly on the wreath. The artemisia, the wormwood, smells delicious. It's very good to get rid of moth. So if I hang this where I suspect there might be a little munchy moth, then uh, that'll be good too. Anyway, I'm going to carry on until I've finished. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm a sad person. I, it is 20 to 7 on a Saturday night. I really should be sitting down with a glass of wine. Right, it's Sunday morning. I've had the weekly bath. Get me. Clean clothes and everything. And I'm going to finally finish off this thing. They take quite a long time to make, but I do love them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera in closer, put it on one of those slowly roly, wiggly wiggly, speedy uppy things, finish it off and then we'll have a look at it when it's done, okay? So there it is finished. It's very pretty though, I said it myself. I could pudge it, um, so I could stick some extra bits. If I feel there's a hole anywhere that needs covering up, I could, I could cover that up, um, but I doubt I will. The thing I really like about this, I'm not an enormous fan of dried flowers. It's not really my, you know, you can't do all things. So dry flowers are not my favourite thing. I know love, some people absolutely love them. Um, but I promise you that in the winter, this will look much brighter. And that's why dry flowers are so good for the winter. Um, but the thing I really like is the wormwood, the Artemisia. I couldn't remember the name. Thank you very much, all of you who commented on my last clip. Um, Smells delicious. It's a really lovely herby smell. And it is famously good for getting rid of moth. <laughs> Clothes moth. So if I hang this up in my bedroom on the wall, uh, it will help fight the moth. But equally, I could just snip little bits of Artemisia and pop them between my sweaters and hang them in my cupboard to keep the moth at bay um, so they don't eat my clothes. But anyway, there you are. Very pretty. I'm going to hang it up and take a photograph. And uh, good luck, everybody. I hope you have fun harvesting your your material for drying in your gardens. And uh, put it all to hang in your barn or your kitchen. 
ideally it if you the darker the place that you hang your flowers or material to dry the stronger the color it'll keep but not all of us have a great big dark barn i have my studio that's all i have um but by hanging things in the uh, sort of from the ceiling a they're facing down so they're not being directly lit by sunlight um but b it's quite well ventilated in here the door is nearly always open and so that helps them dry out quickly just remember if you're going to do this don't dry your material in fat bunches with damp leaves strip the stems hang in small bunches and once they're really really dry then you can put them all into bigger bunches and have them to one side and what i'm doing now is i'm just going round because i want to cover up my workings um so i'm just tucking in once you've got your basic wreath made it's easy just to tuck in extra little bits so I'm just tucking in a few little extras to finish it off and then I'll hang it up and show you.